Welcome to Yard Talk. I'm Greg. And I'm Doug. Puget Sound is the front yard for much of western Washington. And on the surface, it's magnificent. A front yard tells the world a lot about the people who live there and what's important to them. On the surface, a yard can be beautiful, useful, and full of wildlife. And beneath the surface, your soil should be filled with worms, bugs, and all kinds of life. The life under the surface supports the life above. That's right, and the same goes for Puget Sound. What's happening beneath the surface matters just as much as what's happening above, even though it's hard to see. Have you ever wondered what life looks like beneath the surface? Spiny lump sucker. Sea anemones. A mother octopus guarding her eggs. Baby wolf eels. And also the garbage and pollution and the underwater filmmaker who can't wait to get back under the water whenever she can. Over her 20 years as a videographer and diver in Puget Sound, Laura James has witnessed the sea life changing beneath the surface and the impacts from above the surface. So we're here today with diver Laura on Puget Sound. Laura, you've been diving for about 23 years, and in the last years you've seen some big changes in Puget Sound. Can you talk to us about that? Puget Sound is pretty much my favorite place to dive. I've been diving here since I was a teenager. What I've seen is an increase in the trash and the pollution underwater, especially out from the storm drains. Hmm. We've got so many people in the greater Puget Sound region. We're making an impact. A lot of times I'll see human trash out here underwater. It's not pristine. It looks pristine here on the surface. You go beneath the surface, plastics, a lot of plastics like um, coffee cup lids, you know, those with disposable coffee cup lids, you see McDonald's and um, fast food ketchups. Pretty much anything that can slip down the grate of a storm drain will go out into Puget Sound. I see floaty plastics, which are your bottle caps and your different types of plastics that actually float. I see the plume, and that's got all the toxins and the pollutants in it. It looks like this billowing cloud when it's raining and I dive on these storm drains. It is a never ending, um, just black, just dark cloud coming out of them. And then I see the heavy plastics and it makes kind of a swath, a debris trail. And in that you'll see anything that doesn't float. Toys, that's where I see the coffee cup lids and the stir straws and a lot of plastic. I do a lot of stuff to help Puget Sound and the health of Puget Sound. Um, I do cleanups myself. I kind of feel like divers are the last stand against pollution because we're out there and we can go out and every time we go for a dive, we can pick up two pieces of trash and you bring that back, you put it in your pocket or you carry it back, whatever you need to do. And slowly but surely, we'll make some kind of impact because there's a lot of divers out here. I'm a co-director of a program called Don't Feed the Toxic Monster. And that's seven simple solutions to help people um, learn about what they can do with their daily actions to protect Puget Sound. A few of the seven simple steps, one would be scoop the poop. And it really, I mean, that's a, that's a huge one. I mean, there are so many people around Puget Sound. If we would just go out and one time a week pick up dog poop that isn't ours, and I know that sounds like pretty uh, tough yeah. to get people to do, but so if you important. think about it, it's just so important. Another great thing that everyone can do is practice natural yard care. Don't use pesticides, don't use fertilizers. If you want to do something even better, you can put in a rain garden or a cistern to help stop the flow of water into Puget Sound. Well, thanks, Laura, for meeting with us today. You've given us some great tips that we can take home and practice for ourselves. I'm here with water quality expert, Jeannie Dorn. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Greg. How is Quartermaster Harbor doing? Quartermaster Harbor is doing okay, but it could be doing a lot better. We know for sure that there's too much fecal coliform getting into the marine water of Quartermaster Harbor. Will that end up in like shellfish? I mean, could, if I eat gooey ducks or butter clams, could that poop organism end up in the clam? Yes, it could. And, that's, and that's why in many areas uh, around Puget Sound, Washington State Department of Health does 
close beaches for shellfish harvest, just for that exact reason. Yeah, I've known sometimes the beaches are close to swimming also. Correct, because the fecal coliform coming down our streams around Puget Sound sometimes is just too high and it's just not safe for kids and other people to contact. So where is all this fecal coliform coming from? Uh, other, is it only coming from the waterfront landowners? Oh no, fecal coliform excessive amounts can come from pet waste that's not picked up, mm -hmm. poor agricultural practices um, like not covering manure piles, keeping them protected from the rain, that can definitely lead to fecal coliform in stormwater runoff. So what I'm hearing is it's not just waterfront property owners. Really, everybody plays a part no matter where they live in the watershed? Definitely, everybody plays a part. One of the things that diver Laura mentioned were these underwater plumes. Could you explain those a little bit? Definitely. In big urban areas like Seattle and other cities around Puget Sound, when it rains a lot, the water can't soak into the ground because we've paved so much of Puget Sound. So the water rushes into stormwater pipes, and the stormwater pipes carry huge amounts of rainfall right into Puget Sound. And that's why it's so important to try to fix vehicle leaks so that things like antifreeze and oil isn't carried directly into Puget Sound. Are there things that happen in people's yards or the environment that can actually help filter that runoff with all those pollutants? Definitely, if you have something like a properly installed rain garden, that can go a long way toward helping to filter out pollutants such as too much fertilizer. Um, but on a bigger scale, all around Puget Sound, wetlands act as Mother Nature sponges. Actually, they capture pollutants and hold them and break them down. And uh, right here in Quartermaster Harbor, there's a wetland just over here that contributes to a lot of water quality cleaning. But sadly, around Puget Sound, so many of our wetlands have been lost to development. Thank you, Jeannie. Puget Sound is still one of the most beautiful places in the world, and we all need to work hard to keep it that way. One of the first principles of stormwater management is to slow the flow. In fact, the way we handle stormwater on our properties can be creative and even beautiful. This yard was designed by Vera Johnson of Village Green Perennial Nursery in White Center. Vera's client had a yard that wouldn't drain after a storm. The yard was a soggy mess. Vera first prepared the soils to drain and then connected the downspout from the house before planting, always following the correct guidelines for building a rain garden. Another great feature for any driveway is using grasscrete a paver that lets rain quickly soak into the ground. The pavers are filled with gravel and topsoil, then planted with hardy grass, moss, or ground covers. Here in King County, we get about three feet of rain each year. Depending on how large your roof is, that can be over 50,000 gallons of rainwater each year. I'm here with water harvesting wizard Michael Laurie of Watershed LLC. We're at Michael's house and he has all kinds of neat water saving technologies here like green roofs and rain gardens and different cistern systems. But today Michael's going to show us a real simple water harvesting system that anybody can do at home. Michael? Okay, yeah, like Greg said, there's three barrels here, three 50 gallon barrels that are available on a variety of sources but it all starts right here at the downspout where you insert this little item here called a rainwater diverter. And then you connect in some other pieces that you can get at most hardware stores. So the water, when, when there's a rain uh, event, the water comes down into the barrel and there's screening on the top of the barrel so that insects won't get in here and the, the barrels are all connected to each other. And then there's an overflow in the back here that goes into this little swale. And the idea there is if I was gone and it was raining and this was connected up, well, I don't have to worry about water overflowing about all over the tank. It'll go into the swale. 
And then uh, for the use of the water that's in these tanks, right now it's shut off, but if I flip this switch, the water would start coming out of the uh, soaker hose right there into the garden. Another option is to fill just a little bucket like that with the water from uh, the, the tanks. Michael, what would some of the benefits be of having one of these systems? Well, there's a couple of benefits. One, um, you know, if, especially if you're in the city area where stormwater could be a problem, um, this could help absorb some of the heavy rainfall that might create some kind of destruction uh, as the water flows away. So you can absorb it here, slowly release it either into a swale or into your garden, but also it can save you money um, on your uh, irrigation water bill. And a third option for, uh, at least for Vashon and maybe some other areas, is that the water utility here sometimes, in the peak of the summer, they uh, start to set, hit some limits on how much water they can supply. Um, and so they put out notices asking people not to water so heavily. If I get a notice about not watering so heavily, that's okay because I have these rain barrels. Uh, if I've, assuming I've saved up some water for that kind of an event. One thing I really like about having the rain barrels also is that it, you have an extra faucet. My house only has one spigot on the front of it, and this way I can actually put rain barrels at the back corners of the house, and I have places where I can fill up my water jug and water my veggies. I actually have five other areas where I have rainwater systems around the house. They're all spread out so that, <clears throat> just like you said, I have multiple faucets <clears throat> have multiple systems that are matched to different parts of the garden. Hey, Michael, if I wanted to fill up my water bottle here, would that be okay? No, actually, because this is untreated rainwater, it may have picked up some uh, pollutants from the roof, and, uh, you know, there could be something that might make you sick if you drank that directly out of the uh, rain barrels. It's probably relatively okay, but not safe enough to drink. Thanks a lot, Michael, for showing us the system today. Thank you, Greg. Now this is a system that is so easy, anybody can do it at home. Puget Sound is our front yard, and it should reflect our values. Do we want Puget Sound to become a sick, toxic stew? The good news is that there are lots of resources available to help us make smart choices and simple changes to protect Puget Sound. For more information about everything we covered on today's show, visit our website or call the Garden Hotline. Meanwhile, there are many things you can start doing in your own yard right away. Avoid pesticides in your yard and look for natural ways to combat pests. Build a rain garden and explore other creative options. Capture water for reuse and plant trees to absorb even more. And remember why this matters. It matters for the orcas, for our families, and for all of us. So have a healthy yard. And a healthy family and planet too.